authorities, we told you at the top of the show, the parents of that Oxford, Michigan high school shooter, Ethan Crumbly, will each spend 10 to 15 years in prison. A judge handed James and Jennifer Crumbly that sentence today. They are the first parents ever to be held criminally responsible for a shooting committed by their child. Family members of the Oxford shooting victims addressed the Crumbleys during the hearing. One of them was Craig Schilling. He is the father of 17-year-old Justin Schilling. Craig Schilling and his lawyer, Ben Johnson, join me now. Craig, uh, that must have been the most difficult day today. I watched every moment of it. Um, your testimony was really powerful. I just want to get your reaction to the judge's sentence. He, she gave him the maximum. Is it enough? Well, I, it's the maximum. So, I mean, I guess it's it's enough in the capacity of the law. So, um, I, I mean, uh, I would rather see maybe something go like, um, you know, one after the other. I don't know how the kid score is not running uh, consecutively. Right. So, but I mean, whatever. It, it's, uh, it really wasn't about the, the sentencing per se. Um, it really was about just bringing this to light and, and getting the accountability. But I mean, during the course of the trial, there there was a lot that that occurred that you know um, made me feel more and more that it really was the maximum. Really was the best the best way to go. What was it you heard during the trial that made you feel that way? Oh, I, I mean, just picking up the, the little things, you know, demeanors, um, the the things that they say, uh, the mode, their actions. Uh, it, it says a lot, and you know, it carries a lot of weight with it, and. Um, and it uh, affects you. It uh, affected me anyway. Some of the some of the remarks are definitely. Yeah, you told the Crumbleys in court today. You told them. You turned and looked at them and said, "The blood of our children is on your hands too." Clearly, the jury believed that to be true, and clearly, the judge agreed. Yes, uh, definitely. And you know that was kind of the whole the whole message I wanted to convey that. Um, you know, if you look at when you look at it like that, it it, it holds a little more um, weight with I feel when you when you bring that into it because ultimately the re it is re the responsibility, the breakdown, and, and the responsibility that that led to this happening. So it's um, I felt uh, I thought it was a fair statement to make. You were one of several parents and family members who mentioned the fact that Jennifer had testified on the stand in her trial that she would do nothing differently if given the chance to go back and change anything. What did you think the moment you heard her say that? I was I was I was taken back by it. Um, I was clearly the fact that she said it. It was really um, I don't know. I, I, I just it threw me it threw me back, and I, I didn't know how to take it. You know, I, I didn't know what to uh, take about. I mean, I, I guess um, obviously according to her, there was more to it, which. I mean, I would hope so anyway, because it, it, it is a pretty um, impactful statement. There are pretty, you know, damning kind of a statement to say something like that. And uh, it's hard to say if, if the intent was for the way I took it anyway. You painted quite a picture of your son, Justin, in your victim impact statement. Um, he was just 17 years old. Um, he was an athlete, uh, a really gifted athlete, a very, very uh, gifted student. Tell our audience about Justin. Oh, uh, this time of year, it's always um, a pleasure to talk about Justin. Uh, this is a, his birthday is in a week, just over a week. So I'm, I'm always happy to, to throw out a few things about him and, and just how he was such a, a great guy. Um, he was a really, um, really fun to be around. I'm sorry, it's something. Hello? Yeah, I'm there. I can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. Somebody keeps uh, coming in here. So, I'm but anyway, he was, a, he, was, he was a great kid, um, hardworking kid, um, just just a fun to be around with. Uh, always had that, that big smile that you see there. Uh, it's definitely something that he radiated and he could back that up, you know, and uh, he had a he had that way to, to bring that out in other people as well. Yeah. So I, um, I totally... Uh, Totally will miss that smile. I, I think about it all the time. It's it's what it's the picture I have in my phone. So as soon as anybody calls or texts, that's what I see is that big smile, and and it gives me a little bit of smile. Then uh, I I know you're you're Craig's lawyer. I just wanted to ask you because you have such you've got legal experience. 
Were you surprised today when you didn't hear the Crumblies take more accountability or responsibility or even show more remorse to Craig and the other parents who got up there and the sister of one of the victims who got up there and, and, and talked about how their lives have been shattered? Sadly, Elizabeth, no, I wasn't surprised by any of it. These folks have denied accountability in their own role in what uh, the two juries, right? So literally 24 people uh, have found that they were guilty of. They assisted in and were a part of four murders and so much more. And so for them to get up there today and deflect and deny, delay, defend, it's just another day in the life of Crumley's. And so, no, I wasn't surprised at all, sadly. And I don't think they did themselves any favors with the judge either, Elizabeth. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, Jennifer read a statement that she had prepared in which she said she warned anybody listening and anybody in Michigan, you, this could be you, this could happen to you, it could happen to anybody because I thought I had the right. perfect kid. That's not right. really the case, is it? No, not at all. They had so many warnings, right, over and over and over again where their own kids try to tell them that he's having difficulties, he's hallucinating, he's delusional, or from their perspective, he was making that up. No matter what, whatever you want to spin it, the fact of the matter is they had a severely troubled young man. And when you read the manifesto, uh, when you read uh, his text messages to his friends and so forth for the last year, this kid didn't get that way, Elizabeth, uh, simply within the last couple months. He was clearly highly disturbed, and he was crying out for help, and his parents did not take even the time to take him to mental health professionals just to see what's going on. It was very, very, very sad. Yeah, it's a little like you when you hear her say, we had the perfect kid and our family was, was great. You're, it's a little like after reading all those text messages, what planet are you on? Well, correct, and that's exactly what the judge uh, found today, right, and ruled, as you know, above the guidelines. So she went above and beyond what the guidelines would say, because this is an above and beyond situation. The the, the suffering that Craig and, and, and Jill, Justin's mom, my other clients, the Mears, and, and all of the families, the Gregory's, all of them, what they've gone through is just completely unimaginable, we hope, and should never be repeated again. And that's why it's so important that we hold these people accountable. And then the next phase that I know Craig feels strongly about, and Jill as well, and that is against the uh, Oxford Community Schools and the individuals in what we call rounds four and five, Elizabeth, in the civil litigation. All right, Ben Johnson, Craig Schilling. Craig, um, thank you for joining us. Um, my course, heart goes out to you and your family. I have sons around the age of your son, and I can't fathom your loss. I, I pray somehow you manage to find peace. Thank you.